So I've just completed day one of the basic bow bath course which is going to go on for the next couple of weeks and to um, help with my retention of memory is to do a little video diary just of some of the key points from each day. So um, a few of the key words that I found really amazing from today's um, session was that the bow bath concept is all about improving efficiency of um, the muscle use but essentially the efficiency of how someone can move so function is much easier for them. And the other thing is that, you know, the bow bath concept is all about giving someone the absolute maximum potential to change and um, that everyone should have, you know, should never be ridden off that they can't change. Um, a quote from Janet Stevens today, which I absolutely loved, was that I'm a much better therapist than I was last year, but I will be even better again next year. And I think that's something I really want to live by with my, you know, clinical therapy input that I'm always going to be getting better. Some of the practical things that really um, drove home today was um, what the surface that we might put someone on in sitting, that often we might put someone on quite a soft surface thinking we're helping their pressure areas or making them more comfortable but what we can actually be doing is decreasing a lot of muscle activity and making function actually much much harder for them. The other thing was the importance of giving um, some compression in a joint to increase sensory feedback so that the client has got more awareness of where that joint may be in space. So that's day one and we'll wrap up with day two tomorrow. Day two of the basic bow bath course. Today I think it was really driven home about how bow bath the bow bath concept isn't just about hands-on but it's a real problem solving approach it's all about how you assess how you plan and ultimately how you clinically reason your treatment so essentially it's the fundamental behind all of you know all of what we do as a neurological and um, rehab specialist two of the really key things I took home um, from today's session was first of all the real fundamental importance of gravity and how we really need um, our postural control and postural stability to be working up against gravity but also the importance of going with gravity and actually being able to let go of muscles and relax them and I think that's a real key area that um, I haven't addressed and um, really need to look at in my practice is getting clients to be able to switch off their muscles much easier. Something else which was really fascinating is that the hand has 50% or sorry 50% of the hands um, receptors are actually sensory based and um, so if you're looking at retraining upper limb and stuff and you're giving people kind of cups or plastic things that don't really give any kind of sensation back up to the cortex then it's very difficult for them to have that awareness of what they're doing with their hand so you know giving people something more texture so they get a bit more of an upward afferent information is really important so I'll be going back and making sure that a lot of the upper limb stuff that I use has got that real textured um, surface to help with that. See you for day three. The feedback after day three of the basic bow bath course and um, two of the main things that really hit home today was the role of the vestibular system in being upright and its huge impact it has within the cerebellum um, and that was something that was really interesting about the need to have people up against gravity to really increase that postural tone and, and have them working up against gravity which is really significant for those who are spending a lot of time in a wheelchair that they do have to get upright and the vestibular system is much much more important than just the inner ear canal stuff that we've previously thought it was. The other really key thing I took away from today is that you only need about two millimeters of ground clearance for swing phase and that just really highlights that if someone isn't able to get a clear swing through then it's more likely to be something happening on their stance leg and often it's their position of their pelvis and their trunk over that stance leg to give them that shifting and de-weighting so that they can bring their leg through easily and um, I think that's the key area that I will definitely work a lot more on to allow people to get that easier swing phase. Day four of our reflective vlog of the basic bow bath course and two of the really main points that um, I took home from today was the art of communication regarding um, communicating with your hands rather than the verbal commands. The more verbal commands and explicit um, commands that you use, especially um, if it's someone with um, damage to the basal ganglia, can actually switch off their potential to learn the movement, so that ability to carry over the 
the gains. So a really key thing there of being much more selective with that verbal use. The other one was um, trying to increase activity through the corticospinal tract, which is one of the main tracts in the nervous system, going from the body up to the brain, up to the cortex. And that was that um, with the hands that needing to really activate lumbricals, which is the um, lots of all the little muscles in between the fingers and also selective finger movement rather than going for that kind of gross reach and grasp, which often if I'm training quite a... Um, low density arm that's one of the first things i would have chosen to do was kind of a reach and grasp being functional rather than to try and give someone that more that selectivity which at the end of the day is way more functional than a gross arm so some really key points today and um we've got day five tomorrow and then we have a couple of days break so um good time to consolidate what we've learned so far so that's week one so I've just completed week one of the basic bow bath course and it's just been absolutely amazing. Been absolutely impressed with the depth of knowledge that we've been covering from a neuroanatomy and physiology and kind of kinesiology base. Um, it has just been so impressive and the depth that we're going into is it's just really phenomenal which is excellent. So the two main points I could took away from today, one is that high tone, so that contracted muscle group is often um, forced to come along from a stability point of view because there's a low tone element somewhere which isn't allowing the individual to have enough postural control so they have to fix somewhere else and that's one of the reasons why antispasmodic medication can be a real issue because they actually block some neuroplastic principles but also if you're taking away someone's tone and they don't have a stable base they can actually end up worse off than what they were so that was really interesting to get a little bit more knowledge about that the other one was actually the importance of your knee moving forwards over your feet for going both up from a sit to, from a sitting position into standing and back down in regards as a therapist blocking someone's knee so i will block knees a lot with spinal cord clients or strokes who can't get up on those feet very well um, and realizing that i'm not giving quite enough space to have that translation forwards of the knee and the tibia over the foot um, so that's kind of a clinical thing that i really take away from today to alter and looking forward to week two starting in a couple of days time